the, select, the practicum team allocation process, which students end up on which team, is a very structured process that we've developed over time here at the Institute. The idea, the basic philosophy is that if we get the team composition right with a good diverse set of backgrounds there, better product will result. That's what we've seen over time and the students will get better educational value out of it because they're learning from each other via the experience. So we do it in a very careful, careful, uh, elaborate process. Um, first step is figuring out who the team lead should be. And the team leads amongst the student body are not necessarily those with the most experience. These people, perhaps, that are older have had um, lots of team lead experience uh, in a small context already. They don't need another team project. Um, and so it's probably that person that's more like two years out of undergraduate that's probably had a little professional experience, demonstrated some, some, uh, some good leadership, and is ready for the next step. And so that's kind of the, maybe the middle of the normal distribution, to use an analytical term. And if you kind of fall in that role, and you do good in terms of your academic grades across the uh, summer time frame, and your peers say that you're a good teammate, these are the things that are beginning to uh, indicate to us. And it really is us. It's the collective judgment of the staff and faculty that get together and sort this out. Uh, and we will see different things from different people. Um, all that will weigh in together and we'll identify a list that we think are a pretty good set of people that are ready to take this next step. The academics really do matter. The fall in the, uh, in the institute, uh, the MSA, is a very challenging part of the program and you must be able to get through that, handle that academic load. So we're looking for some academic excellence in the course of the, in the, course of the summit, summer. You have to lead others, so you have to have those peer-to-peer -peer skills and peers have to be able to say, yeah, you're doing, you're doing good. The faculty and the staff get to know the students through working on a summer project that's very open-ended. We can see how you handle ambiguity. Um, we can see how you interact in class and we form opinions and uh, we use that collective judgment, uh, discussion, consensus, some, uh, some back and forth amongst each other to pick out who's the best fit for team. Sure. The next step we're trying to do in the, uh, in the process is then match those team leads to the project set that we have. And so those projects we have will have different levels of challenge. And so if you have a more challenging project, perhaps with a more challenging sponsor, more analytically mature sponsor, you might want a team lead that has a little more experience. You might have something that's a little bit less difficult. That might be right for somebody that might be straight out of undergrad that demonstrated all that excellence, even in spite of having a lack of experience. We want to make them a team lead, but we don't want to give them the hardest project on the books. So there's a fit there. There's a fit for domain knowledge. You may have a background that you want to continue in, and we'll try to respect that and probably manage the domain knowledge that you already have in the assignment process, whether that be a team lead or as a regular team member. You may have a background that you want to move from. That's the reason you're in grad school. You no longer want to work in banking, and so you're trying to transition. We'll respect that. We'll take opinions down and you're, uh, through a survey process of industries you'd like to work with and industries that you wouldn't, and we'll try to manage that too. It tends to be a tiebreaker, and it's down the list on priority. We're really trying to get a diverse set of people together on a team. On a team. After we've got the, uh, the team leads assigned to the project, the next step is to try to spread out the technical talent there will be a distribution of talent across, in terms of skill set, in terms of programming and coding. And we get a, we'll get to know you across the course of the summer. We'll try to spread out that talent across the team so everybody has some of that, that higher end part of the class on their team that's suited to the needs of the project. And then we'll balance across educational background, gender, internationality, about three or four more things, personality traits, MBTI results, much more that we can talk about. All this balancing act goes on, it goes on from a consensus standpoint from the view of the entire staff and faculty. And the final recommendation goes to the director and uh, you might make a change or two after that and uh, the, team, the team allocation chart gets published. An additional step that's taken when we allocate team members uh, via a survey, we ask if there might be an ethical constraint. You don't work, want to work in an industry because you have some sort of ethical constraint. It might be national security. You don't want to do that. You may want to do that. We want to know that. Um, there may be an ethical constraint against big pharma, big ag. These have happened in the past with students, and we respect that. And if you identify this is something I'm ethically uncomfortable with in this survey, then we'll respect that and try to move forward with it. There are a couple other cases. National security, a positive preference is essential to get you uh, to work in some of the, with some of the agencies we work with. 
Um, and if you want to work on a sports project, you need to positively identify that you love the sport. The domain knowledge in many of the sports is just too steep a curve to assign anybody to something that's a little bit outside their passion. The lessons we want the students to learn via the practicum are really built around learning from the experience itself. Um, perhaps you could say that academia tends to teach out of the book with lectures and content, homework assignments that are very structured so the students learn. We want to expose them to the real world and so they get to learn real world problem framing is one of the key, the key things we want them to learn. The practical knowledge is necessary when you're dealing with a messy data set with uh, an expression of executive intent, a proposal coming from a company um, that may be very familiar with their data set or perhaps less familiar with their data set and you've got to make that intent work with the tools you've been given. Uh, that often involves framing the problem, uh, putting forward some assumptions that are key uh, and that the, the outcomes of your work might be very sensitive to. Those are hard for people that haven't worked in the real world background to get comfortable with making such assumptions. So I think that practical problem framing uh, is something we talk a lot about uh, in class here and then the students get to apply it and the real value comes from doing it over and over again. Teaming skills is the next thing that employers tell us they want. It's on every position description that uh, our students are hired into. And you can learn teaming skills by reading in a book from a great lecture, but you really learn teaming skills by, by doing it, by being teams all the time. That coupled with a pretty rigorous system of peer feedback helps people really learn how they're interacting, how they're being perceived by others, are they supporting, are they moving towards a goal, or perhaps they've got something they need to work on a little bit. So teaming skills by experience is, is another goal of the practicum. Communication might be uh, a third, I would add. Um, communicating for a for a, in a business environment is quite a bit different than communicating in an academic environment. Um, if you have a, uh, a science, technology, engineering, management, a STEMish type background, you're probably used to talking in terms of proofs and laying out assumptions and questions early and building to a climax. And you're probably viewing being interrupted by the audience as a negative. Um, and you're moving forward to some climate, climax and maybe in minute 45 you get to the analysis and the conclusion. By then you have lost the senior executive in the room in today's business world. You have to start with the bottom line up front. This is why you're here. This is what, what is in, in it for you. That turns it on the head uh, for many of the, way, many of the ways we have been trained when we're young and coming up in a STEM background. And it takes a little bit of work getting used to that. We have some pretty good instruction and training in that that's very individual specific. But then you got to learn it and do it and you got to do it with five teammates uh, and do it in the real world. And that uh, this practicum also provides that environment. So I think communication, teamwork, and then real world problem management, problem framing is, 